Welcome to A Day of Prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. We're so glad you could join us. But before we get into the word, let's take a moment in praying. Lord, we just thank you for your abundant grace and mercy, Lord, and that you've forgiven us all of our sins, Lord, and that you've washed us clean with the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you that we do not have to remember what others have done to us, Lord, but that we can also forgive them, Lord, and show them the exact same grace and mercy that we want shown to us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. We are excited to have you with us as we continue our study in the Word and currently in the book of Acts. We are continuing our discussion in Acts chapter 14, covering verses 19 through 28. So if you are just joining us on this section of Scripture, I strongly encourage you to pause this episode at this time and Give yourself the opportunity to read through that section of scripture just to make things easier to follow along in our discussion. Amen? Amen. All right, and now the floor is open to give each of you the opportunity to share with the Holy Spirit speaking and ministering to you and to ask any questions that you have. So who'd like to begin? I would. All right, Layla. So the Lord drew to my attention, verse 27, when uh, it's talking about Paul and Barnabas now gathering with the other apostles and reporting all that God had done with them and that he had opened the door um, of faith to the Gentiles. And at first glance, it kind of seems like it could be easy to draw the conclusion that they were tooting their own horn and going, look at me and the great exports God's using me. And, And that wasn't the case. He was telling the other apostles that God has now um, transitioned us from this one spot to the other and what i'm talking about is um in matthew's account and this is during jesus time and chapter 15 and verses 21 through 28 we read about a gentile showing her faith now this account says that she um they went out to the region of tyre and sidon and a woman of canaan came from that region and cried out to him saying have mercy on me o lord son of david my daughter is severely demon possessed but he being jesus answered her not a word and his disciples came and urged him saying send her away for she cries out after us but jesus responds and says i was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of israel then she came and worshiped him saying lord help me um uh, verse 26 and jesus answered her it's not a it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs and she responded yes lord yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table and jesus answered and said a woman great is your faith let it be to you as you desire and her daughter was healed from that very hour mark's account will say that jesus responded for this saying go your way and your daughter has been made whole Mm -hmm. So at this time, there was a common mentality that they were only to preach in Israel. That's who they were sent to. And that's the the scope of their um, apostleship or the spreading of the gospel. We read in John, however, um, when Jesus, yeah, and the end where Jesus is restoring Peter and says, feed my sheep, care for my sheep, tend for my sheep. When he was asking him, Peter, do you love me? And what he was saying was, um, not just the ones that you see now, there are Gentiles coming. And Paul addresses this in a in the previous chapter, um, in chapter 13, where it's verse 16. This is Paul and Barnabas. It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first, but since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles, for so the Lord has commanded us. I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. And now after this, Paul and Barnabas are now telling the other disciples, now it's time for you to transition from just having your eyes on the Israelites to now the Gentiles and the whole world because he commissioned all of them at the end of Matthew to preach the word to every creature under heaven to all the corners. Mm -hmm. And so 
now when we're looking at it in Acts, um, in verse 27, they weren't tooting their own horn again, as I mentioned previously, that they were so great and mighty and powerful. But now they're signaling to the others, now it's time to transition and encouraging them to do so. Mm-hmm. Now, um, if we back up just a, a, a hair, right? The Lord always gives us, I'll say, our destiny, even at the beginning, right? It says, yes. He calls the end from the beginning. In Acts 9, verse 15, he's speaking to Ananias about, well, Paul, at the time Saul, right? And what's yes. he say to him? The Lord says, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. So this was the plan and the purpose of the Lord all the way through. And yes, he also told his disciples, now apostles, to go and spread the gospel throughout the earth, right? Yes. Well, that's still the call for today. The specifics of which are the Lord's, right? He said, Jesus said, I am called to go here, right? Yes. But you are called to go everywhere. He will tell you specifically where to go. That's why you have various people. Uh, we can bring up Reinhard Bonnke, right? The Lord gave him a heart and a mission for Africa. It wasn't the only place or the only continent which he went and ministered to, but that was, a, will say, a primary place and a driving force, if you will, to do the Lord's will in the place where he gave him. And now that's been picked up by Daniel Kalenda. And, right, and there are others where the Lord sent people to a specific location and to minister to a specific people. Yes. It's no different today. We, uh, that's why we will tell you, or I'll tell you, you have to run the race the Lord has given you to run. It's not going to look like everyone else's. There may be some similarities to include the, the place or the location, right? Yes. Yes. But it's not necessarily going to look the same as someone else's ministry. We're all called to be like Christ. But as you were just pointing out, even the disciples themselves weren't called to only remain in the places Christ ministered. It was to branch out, to spread out, right? Yes. Yes. And Paul was also sent, not just to the house of Israel, to the Gentiles and to kings, right? Yes. yes. Okay, he wasn't the only one. We can go all the way back to Jonah. Okay, right? Yes. So let's recognize that. We have to each, I'll say, hold ourselves accountable, be accountable to the Lord, be obedient to the Lord and where he's calling us to go and do and say what he's calling us to do and say while we are there, how he meant for us to do and say it, and when. There's a timing as well that's included in his perfect will and is vitally important. You can't go early and expect the same things to happen. And you can't go late because we'll have missed it. We'll have missed the opportunity and the divine appointment that the Lord set up. Yes. So, we can all, let's recognize that and let's seek the Lord on how to apply that to our life because it absolutely applies today just as it, as it did throughout the entirety of Scripture. What else? Oh, and... When you mentioned that yesterday about time and cost, and you referenced Paul being a master builder and being careful on what, um, who you allowed to build on that foundation that Christ had laid, and the Lord had reminded me the importance of that wasn't just so that you wasted your time or wasted your resources, but as you add um, materials that aren't proper for building or structure, it actually caused um, decay, if you will and problems for the material that was there before. So if you had like a 
that cement floor. That's what we typically build with here in the United States when we do foundations because they're sturdy and strong. But as you start to use certain things in it, like shooting big nails in it, it cracks the foundation. And as you put more weight on it, it changes the integrity of the structure. Mm. And what the Lord had showed me was the the importance of faith. If you cannot believe God for anything or you you don't have faith, that's the currency he uses, you won't be able to go anywhere. You won't um, grow and mature. You have to have a certain level of faith that you, you told me this uh, a while back, but you say it often about the, the necessity of growing your faith. It's like a muscle mm-hmm. and, you, and it's important that you strengthen it because as you go into the world and you preach the gospel as God has called you to greater amounts of faith are going to be needed and if you don't practice that if you don't practice hearing God's voice and obeying immediately if you don't practice spending time in his word without somebody standing over your shoulder going you're going to read your bible this morning when you're left to stand on your own you won't be standing you will be on that ground you know not being where you're supposed to be so in what Paul and Barnabas are doing in the apostles when they went back to encourage them they were also strengthening themselves at the same time going okay it it was a little bit rough having rocks thrown at me yep that that, you know being stoned to death yes that hurt but we have a greater prize just like Jesus he didn't go and look at the people from going oh jesus you ain't good enough and he didn't return the nastiness that they were showing towards him but he looked through the cross and saw the promise of what god had gave him of Mm -hmm. complete this and and you bring redemption to all the others so he could be the firstborn among many brethren and that's the same thing we've got to do today don't get caught up in what it looks like with your eyes because mommy you tell me all the time your eyes are faulty and they're not seeing exactly what you think they're seeing. You need the Lord to reveal it to you so that you judge it accurately. So don't get caught up on the circumstances and what it looks like on the surface, but be in tune with the Holy Spirit because he will guide you through perfectly without loss or anything and lead us in victorious and triumphant procession. That's what he does for us if we're obedient. Amen. Amen. You know, you brought up about going back, and I love this, and and strengthening and encouraging the other apostles. Isn't that iron sharpening iron? Yes. But then I also say this: How can iron sharpen iron unless they're the same? So you talked about the materials in a house, right? Yes. What is said about our faith? Well, what do the apostles say to whoever they're speaking to? They constantly are reminding them, you of precious like faith, or a faith like ours, right? Yes. So even with, you reference building a house as an example. It's a lovely example. But even steel, there are various types of steel. Each one has different strengths and weights that it can withstand, right? Yes. But in order to build a a house, a perfect house, all the materials have to be the same. Does that make sense? Yes. Or the structural integrity is compromised. And then you have some of that steel that's supporting extra weight because another is... Uh, or another steel beam or whatever the case is, is lacking. Yes. Which then does what over time? Bends, Can breaks. warp, can damage it, right? There's a number of things that can happen. But the house, the structure, is lacking integrity. Now, Peter says, hey, we're all living stones being built into the house. There's constant reminder that, hey, as I said just a few moments ago, you of precious like faith were being built up into this thing. But we have to come and submit ourselves to the Lord in order to do that. Yes. And in there is also, yes, encouragement, admonishment, exhortation, all these things that's happening with Paul and Barnabas going to the rest of the church. 
and sharing, hey, this is what the Lord did. Look at, look at everything that happened. We, these churches were set up. He established these people as leaders. Yes, Paul was stoned to death. The Lord raised him up because here he is standing in front of them, right? So Yes. And there's, there's witnesses and there's, there's others that can testify of these same things. All speaking about the goodness of the Lord. Mm-hmm. But how can iron sharpen iron if well, the iron is not the same? And by the same, I mean clearly, accurately, and immediately hearing the voice of the Lord. If that's not their desire to clearly, accurately, and immediately hear the voice of the Lord when he's speaking and put into application in their life what he's telling them to say and do. How then can the iron sharpen the iron if both pieces or parts right, yes. are not the same? don't have the same desire and drive. That's an impossibility. It's not just about the fellowship aspect, Hmm. but it's about everyone involved having that same mindset, being in one accord. Well, there's an element in the body of Christ that everyone isn't on the same level. Mm -hmm. And so for Paul and the apostles, it was iron sharpening iron. But for Paul and the other Gentiles, it was building of a house, Mm -hmm. a father teaching his children, because the same people were just worshiping idols, and there's no way that they came into Christ over a couple of months, and now they're masters themselves with equal sharpness that took Paul 14 years in the Lord and in in seclusion with Christ to develop. So having that that mindset that a baby's expected to be a, a, a battle axe, a sharpened battle axe, to come against, you know, or to press against in in building of a a grown man in Christ or a grown woman in Christ is, you know, I think that's an unfair expectation mm-hmm. um, because we are a family. The Lord references us being a, the family of God in Ephesians, meaning that there are fathers, there are children, there's one father, God, right? But then there are yes. likewise additional maturing ones that come up to help raise the younger generations. There's uncles, there's brothers, all of those things are necessary, right? For us yes. to have the the family come together. Because as I said, these, we were looking at, you know, they went from going your, your um, Zeus and, and Hermes to now the stoning. And then there's a church forming in the midst of that. So all of those centuries or generations of idol worship and the mentality that came behind it, we're still there. All the people did receive with gladness the good news of the gospel. They still had to be renewed in their mind, which is we see all the writings that come after that of of Paul writing to the church and you know various others, apostles writing, hey, put this away. That doesn't belong in the kingdom. This is how we operate in the kingdom. And no, you don't have to put on the law, but here's here's how we move forward in Christ. So just keeping that in mind. And mm-hmm. I wanted to say yesterday, um, I was talking about Paul being stoned more than once. And I, for some reason, I, I thought he was, but Second Corinthians, uh, uh, yeah, Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25 says he was stoned once. Mm. So this is the account that we're reading here in um, Acts 14. And um, back to verse 26, there is a need for us to complete the work that was assigned to us because it does build and strengthen our faith. As you were referencing Layla, um, verse 26 says that you remember that the hands were laid on them and they were commissioned to do a particular work. Yes. And then after they made their first round, they said, we did what the Lord asked us to do. Great. Right. There's a need yes. for us to honor and recognize that we did what you asked us to do, Lord. And also for our other brethren, reminding them or letting them know we were able to complete it builds and strengthens faith. But then we let the boundary be set by God because they mm-hmm. thought they were done, but clearly the Lord was like, no, not quite. Let's, let's make another trip. Let's, you know, there's more work yet to be finished, but it still blesses and it inspires other believers to come forward. And mm-hmm. so you, my love, you read that um, Paul was sent to the Jews the Gentiles and to Kings Mm -hmm. and the role he played with each of them was slightly different. Absolutely. And so like, you know, I I mentioned to the uh, disciples or apostles. Now he was a brother 
and he truly sharpened their iron when he said, Peter, I'm calling you out. You know, that's the Kamisha version. Absolutely. Because he was not holding the gospel rightly and he was being a hypocrite. That was sharpening his iron, right? To them. Yes. And that, that was probably more likely the <laughs> the ones that the <laughs> Lord called him to to keep the church true to what Christ had actually said. Whereas the the Jews didn't often receive what <laughs> Paul had to say, but that's okay. You know, it doesn't mean that God didn't call them, call him to say that to them, but I can see a clear uh, ministry that Paul had to the other apostles. Absolutely. And uh, I love that you brought that up, honey, the, uh, both on the iron side of things, but also in the, the building of the house. And as you were speaking, I was reminded of Solomon building the temple, right? The, the house of the Lord. And, as he did it, it says that there were there was not one chisel heard in all of Jerusalem. The work was done long before they arrived, right? King Hiram, I believe his name was, um, was where they were known to be stone cutters and, and masons and all those things, and they they did all that work, and it was done so perfectly that they could just bring in these stones and put them in its proper place and, and it was just as you were speaking about it and i was reminded of peter when he says hey come like living stones being built up right the lord knows who and where to put his people to be built up yes there we've got to be i'll say shaped and formed and, and molded in his image as it were right uh, scripture says conform to the image of his son, Jesus the Christ, right? But he does that work, and he's doing it here and now, if we will allow him. And the Lord is, he is focused on the individual. Amen. Sometimes we, you know, when we read that scripture, be careful how you build, we're thinking, oh, be careful how you group the church together and things of that nature. But <laughs> the church is nothing more than individuals that have come together to all individually partake of Christ and then fellowship collectively Amen. in partaking of Christ. But the agreement has to happen individually. So when he says, be careful how you build, it's because there's an accountability for what you impart into someone else's life. If you teach people to sin and to profane the Lord, the Lord is going to hold you accountable for that. And the consequence that you sow into other people's lives, God is watching because that same sin if you sow that or build faultily faultily into someone's life and you teach them wrong things about christ saying that you've taught them right and then they pass that down to their children and their generations and their generations right we forget we're like oh well, i just made a mistake but then the people that are on the other side of that the lord is concerned about so that each individual comes to him in a manner worthy of Christ. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's why we say what the Lord tells us to say and do what he tells us to do Amen. because we don't want to sow seeds of corruption into someone else's life. Amen. Now, if you've done that, God will forgive you. Just go ahead and repent. Cause I, I have some, I've thought of things and I'm like, Oh Lord, I said that when I was in sin and I didn't realize, and the Lord is faithful. He'll forgive you. But as your eyes are opened, walk with God in that. Amen. Well, there's a lot in there. So let's pause there for today and give everybody the opportunity to let the Holy Spirit minister to them. And can I get a volunteer to close us out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we just thank you for this time together in the Word, Lord. We thank you for the joy that you have given to each and every one of us in our lives, Lord. We thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord. And we thank you for the good things that you have satisfied us with, Lord, that you have blessed us with, Lord. We thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ, our partners and our listeners, Lord. And we thank you for our fellow brethren, Lord, that haven't quite yet accepted you as Lord and Savior, Lord, but we know that you're reaping them, God. And we just thank you for them now, the reaping and the saving of their souls. We thank you for it now. And we celebrate and rejoice before you because of it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. We love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. We hope you've enjoyed listening to a Day of Prayers morning Bible study. This year, Pastor John and I are believing for 1,000 new partners to believe God with us and join in the work of the ministry. God is doing great things 
through a day of prayer, and we want you to be a part. If the Lord has placed on your heart to partner with us, please contact us online at adayofprayer.org. Click on the menu and select Partner. Complete the form, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.